are here once again uh, at uh, AES 2006 in San Francisco, and I'm here with Mike Castoro. Castoro? Castoro. Castoro. I had that right before, but I have it right now. He's the president of Wonder Audio, and uh, uh, Mike is rolling out a brand new console uh, today. Right? right. This, this, is, this is the first glimpse. So let's take a look. Inaugural day. Uh, basically, it's based on a 12 channel system. Uh, you can have anywhere between 12, 24, 36, 48, 60 channels uh, total. So this is one of the 12 channel buckets. Uh, the main thing about this console is fully balanced. Like if the summing buses are all balanced and the aux send buses are all balanced, which is a big achievement. A lot of the uh, Class A discrete consoles that were made like this didn't have a balanced busing scheme, so the the busing was a little noisy. How many buses in this one? This is a six bus. We have uh, three different stereo pairs of buses that are selectable on any combination on any of the modules. Uh, the main left-right buses are Wonder Audio Sound, per se, and uh, this next stereo bus called 1-2, that's a 1272 style. Oh, okay. And then three and four would be like a discrete op amp, kind of like API type That's interesting. Style. So you're introducing coloration in the buses as a design point. Right. So you could choose any one of those stereo buses to be your main master bus, or you could use any one of them to do subgrouping with, or any combinations that you could think of. So, interesting. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the let's talk about the EQ stage a little bit. Uh, these are... Uh, uh, combination pots, is that correct? Yeah, um, it's basically what you call a Wayne Bridge EQ. Uh, this EQ was first designed in 1971 for uh, Zeppelin. You know, uh, they had a custom board built. It was called the Allotrope. And I ended up buying all those. There was only 24 modules ever made and uh, for one board. And I ended up getting the modules. The board got destroyed. But, uh, yeah. brought out a window. I think it fell down some stairs, actually. <laughs> and uh, it, the story goes, this is like five or six years ago, I love those modules so much, I wanted to put them in my Neve. I'd like a big Neve 80 series, like a 48 channel 80 series. And they wouldn't fit, they're a little too wide. So we re-engineered the module from the ground up, like reverse engineered it to fit into the 1073 style enclosure, which is basically, you know, the, the rear connector would be your Amphenol 18-pin connector, which is compatible with the 1073. It ran on the same 24-volt rail, so that was possible to do. Uh, but that's where the similarity stops to the 1073, just the size and the rear connector. There, like I said, the Neve was a Wayne Bridge EQ, so is this, but I find that there's more boost and cut on here. And there, like there's 20 dB of boost and cut on each of the bands. And But more importantly, the transformers are a different style transformer. The output transformer on the 1073s was kind of was a steel, where this is a mu metal, which uses a cobalt mixed in with the nickel and the iron. It has a very smooth sound and very little phase uh, discrepancy. Like some of the, like up at 20K, the old 1073 kind of phase shifted about 130 degrees, where this one phase shifts about 30 degrees. Much less phase problem. So you get a really wide open high end, a really big bottom end with no phase shift. And that's the main difference in the sound. So I, one thing led to another, and uh, now we're making frames for them. I never thought we'd make the frame, because I had my old knee frame, and I could tell other people I could buy a knee frame and put wonders in them, but that never panned out, because you really can't find a good conditioned old knee frame. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up, because uh, it, it, see, the aftermarket for, for knee frames is not something that's taken off, because, right. of, because, because of the condition yeah, that they've they're been found. Yeah, usually clunkers. So. Yeah. Well, we did. We just uh, built 50 of these frames now, and uh, so we're getting them going in Austin right now. Oh, Austin! You're based in Austin. Yeah. yeah. Where do you see your? Uh, where do you? Where do you? You know, the project studios, major studios. How do you? I mean, well, this could be ordered as little as a 12 channel, or you could 
get it as big as 96 or whatever. It's fully balanced, so you go into a big studio. Uh, you know, you have the flying fader package. But I would think you know, a lot of people who don't want to mix in the box, like people who are mixing in Pro Tools, are finding that it sounds kind of constrained or phasey, or you know, you got problems with the internal busing scheme. So a lot of people I find are wanting to mix on an outboard analog bus. Right. A lot of it is small rack mount buses, but some people really want to have a board other than a mouse, sure. like me, you know, so right. that's the way we set this one up. Did I hear you say flying faders? I'm sorry if I missed that. Yeah, this the standard comes with a PNG conductive plastic fader, but you could upgrade it to flying faders. So it's still, it's an all analog piece no matter what? All analog piece. Oh. Uh, another main difference between this and the old frames is that, you know, if you pull out the modules, all the module compartments have sub enclosures that are fully enclosed. It makes the board better uh, reject RF and EMI, and it makes the, the buckets stronger rigidity wise. If you're going to have like eight buckets long, it's not going to sag. You know, so there's a lot of metal metal tooling that went into the enclosure here. It also comes with, for our own little personality touch, we added these end, end cheeks out of unlimited choice of hardwoods that are available. So like if a studio says, you know, I want to have like a birch or a, a redwood or whatever, you know, we have a very good in-house carpenter that makes all the stuff. Right, there's really cool uh, logic in the master section for the mute. The mute has a kind of a uh, very cool feature. It, it uh, mutes, the mute turns on and off with an opto. So it's fully clickless. There's no click when you mute in and out. It's very silent. And that's the thing that we designed. And uh, there's also mute logic and solo logic. Like you could globally defeat all your solos or switch from AFL to PFL from the master section. And plus we have an inline fader, which is nice. How many sends? Six? Uh, there's four sends or eight sends. We have two different routing modules, and they're all selectable career post. What's really nice is they have, we have a pan defeat, so if you don't want to go through the panning resistor, which is on every console if you're using pan, you could just uh, bypass that. A lot of stuff you don't need to pan, like your kick, snare, vocal space. So, and stuff that you want a hard left and right pan, you could defeat that too, just by pressing the left or the right bus. Got it. So you wouldn't have to activate pan unless you wanted something kind of quasi-center, you know, kind of pan somewhere in the middle. Do you have a website so people can uh, check out more information about this port? Yeah, it's just wonderaudio.com. W-U-N-D-E-R? Yeah, w like the candy bar. Say. Terrific. <laughs> hey, uh, Mike, great pleasure. Hey, nice, nice coming by, man. Nice to meet you.